What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani of the Sports Courier. I am joined by a very special guest, a good friend of the Sports Courier. Haven't talked to him in a while. He is a professional wrestling legend, but a lot of you may know him for what he's doing right now with DDP Yoga. He is unstoppable, brother. Diamond Dallas Page. Dallas, what's going on, my man? Hey, man, right now I'm, uh, I'm in the hills of Tennessee. Uh, you know, I had a uh, little special thing I had to do here for one of my members of Team DDP Yoga. So I came out here and uh, hooked him up, and now I'm heading back to uh, Atlanta, man. Very cool. Now, we're going to talk about the nice little feature you got on Real Sports and HBO in just a second, but you were also featured on the Triple H documentary, Thy Kingdom Come, which just came out the other night. What was that like reminiscing? Because you have an interesting story about how you met Triple H and got hooked up with some guy named Kevin Nash. Well, you know, um, man, Triple H and I go back to when he was, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Paul Levesque, you know, real name, uh, just like Paige Joseph Falkenberg's mine. <laughs> uh, but when he was terrorizing in WCW and he had just come in, and, uh, you know, um, Paige was one of the guys who, who literally would go down the power plant and work me down there because I was really green back then. And he was pretty green himself. But, you know, I just knew that, you know, Terry Taylor, um, he was down there actually working up with us back in those days. And, um, you know, we'd, uh, you know, we just work up from chain wrestling to whatever else we did, you know, and, uh, you know, whatever. So we were working on moves or whatever. And, and Triple H was right there, man. His work ethic. And mine was really, like, considered, like, the strongest in the business. But his was right there with me. And I'll never forget me and Terry Taylor were at a, uh, at a strip joint with uh, <laughs> Triple H one night. And, and Paul had gone to the bathroom, and Terry looks at me, and he said to me, he's got your work ethic. And I looked at him, and I go, yeah, and his age. <laughs> he was, like, 15 years younger than me. And, uh, you know, we, we were cooked up on the road a few times and uh, got some good times, and he, he was a good, great guy to drive with because he don't drink, he don't do pills, he didn't do nothing. You know, so if I wanted to catch a buzz that night and drink, you know, I have to worry about it. If I knew Paul had the helm, you know, he had the, he had the con. So uh, he'd be driving. And uh, when he went up to, uh, he made the decision to go to the WWF, now WWE, you know, back in the day, you know, Kevin Nash, who was one of my closest friends at the time, you know, back when we used to be uh, the tag team partners together back in WCW, you know, I called them up and I just said, hey, Kev, uh, you got this kid coming up, uh, this ball of back coming up. Uh, you know, uh, he, he's, got, he's got a hell of a work ethic. He's a great kid. He's got a good heart. You don't drink. You don't do drugs. I go, you need to, like, maybe get to know him and uh, take him under your wing. And that's exactly what he did. You know, he, 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 I'm sure it helped by, you know, giving him the push coming in. But, you know, Triple H, he, he makes his own way. You know, and uh, bottom line is uh, they asked me when I was doing um, – but I was doing something, I doing a bunch of wraparounds for different shows and I was with Mania, you know, last time there. And then they brought me in and started asking me questions about Triple H. I said, I got a bunch of those stories. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how cool is it being a Jersey boy like myself, seeing WrestleMania back there? That was a crazy spectacle. We got the Super Bowl now. Of course they have WrestleMania in Jersey and the Super Bowl in Jersey after you move out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the stories I like to tell about Triple H because um, remember, now he was down the power plant the day Johnny Ace came through, Johnny Laurinaitis, a.k.a. Um, he came through, was staying at my house, and he said, I got a new finish for you to start using. And I didn't really have a good finish up to that point. And uh, Johnny would take the guy by the head with one arm, point his other arm to the ceiling, make the peace sign, and drop the Ace Crusher, as he called it. <laughs> and... Um, when we all, you know, I was working through it, Stephen Regal had taught me a move called the cravat. And it's a shoot hole. When I put that hold on you, I don't care who you are, you ain't getting out of it. Maybe if you're a big show, but that's it. <laughs> um, but uh, bottom line is, it's, it's, it's a death, you know, it's a death spot. And then just taking him to the mat. And, um, Paul, you know, Triple H was there that day. And then, um, you know, I started getting over and started, you know, eventually I started to take it out of nowhere like Jake the DDT, and uh, that's where it really started to get its own thing of the uh, diamond cutter, and then I was just starting to get hot with it, 
and then Triple H used it one night <laughs> for a finish. And I was like, oh, man. You know, because no one had been using it. But of all people to do it, I was so glad it was Triple H because I called him up. And I said, Paulie, I said, I need a favor, man. He said, sure, D, what do you need? I said, don't say that until you hear the favor. Because I got no right to ask you this. I got no, you know, you know Sting had the Scorpion Deathlock. You know, Bret Hart had the Sharpshooter. Same move. You know, different guys in different federations had different moves. And they called them different names. So it really wasn't that big a deal. For, hold on, didn't know if you were going. To the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no, dude, you could have made that. <laughs> We're driving, you could still make that. <laughs> no, come on, that was all right there. Oh, my God. My, my buddy's driving, just missed, uh, missed, missed the shot. It was my fault because I'm talking, and we got the, uh, I got the uh, GPS on the phone here. Oh, I'm oh, sorry about that. that <laughs> 6.4 miles to turn around, get in the left lane. Oh, so man, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I thought your fault. <laughs> I'm just saying, get out of left lane. We're going to zoom around. So, bottom line is, I, I asked Paul, you know, uh, I said, I said, don't say, you know, you'll do it till you hear the request. And I got no right to ask you to do this. And I basically said, listen, man, I said, you know, I, you know I've been getting that diamond cutter over. I saw you use it the other night. I said, man, I would really appreciate it if you wouldn't, you know, if you, if you would stick with that, you know, that, um, uh, that pedigree you got, man, that sweet ass move. And uh, and he said, Sure, D, no problem. I was like, Oh, man. <laughs> you know, thanks so much. Cause, you know, he, he, he didn't have to do that. You know, and he never did it again. That's a crazy story. I've never heard that story before. That's that's yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, so you. He never, he, never did, he never did it again. You know, and nobody up there really did it. Like when Mark Mello started to do the one where I would grab you on your shoulders and swing you out. He called me and asked me. Yeah. I was like, sure, dude. You know, do it, whatever. You know, because my thing was it came out of nowhere. That's what it was for me the most. I never wanted to just spin somebody and do it to them. I wanted them to go for something and boom, boom, and then catch it. Because people want to be surprised. And that's re really legitimately what got that move over. And the new generation of diamond cutters is now called the RKO. How cool is it to see Randy Orton doing... Kind of a variation of your signature move, more often than not, out of I nowhere. Love I love it. I love it. You know, if, if there's any one wrestler that I want to be, you know, akin to, <laughs> a liken to, <laughs> I want it to be Randy Orton. I think he's the best in the business. You know, as far as um, being the best at what he does, he's believable as hell. His promos are strong, and he sells. So, oh, to me. That's what makes a great wrestler. He's got to have it all, and man, he does. So, uh, you know, when, when people think of me, occasionally when he catches an RKO out of nowhere, what an honor, you know? Yeah, man, Randy's something else. He had a great match with Dustin Rhodes, Gold Dust, a few weeks back. I mean, he did, man. Yeah. What a great match that was. And what a way for Dustin, who hadn't been on TV, I don't know, three to five years, <laughs> you know, to just come out of it like that. Yeah. And, you know, big DDP yoga guy right there. Maybe one of the, he, Dustin Rhodes was actually at my retreat in Mexico this year at the DDP Yoga Retreat. That's how big he's into uh, the program. Yeah, you guys have been doing that for a while, right? How long has it been out? Five, has it been five years since you guys have been doing the retreat? About, about three, three years, three. and this year we had 80 people. Wow. And we had to cut it off at 80. So if you want to go to a retreat with Diamond Dallas Page, you know, that's like, you know, we work out. You don't have to make all the workouts, though. And uh, you know, we eat real good, but we also party. You know, and this year it's 11 days. You can go five days, six days, seven days. You can go whatever you want. But I, I'm doing ones back-to-back. -back. So if people want to go for the first weekend, which is like July 5th on, they can or they can go for the next weekend or they can go all the week in between. But we had 20 people sign up for all 11 days. The first two weeks it was up. Because they know as soon as I get to 80, I cut it off. Very cool, very cool. And one thing that was also really cool, you got featured on HBO's Real Sports, got interviewed by the legendary Frank DeFord. What was that like, yeah. man? I mean, so, I mean, watching that guy all these years, I mean, that's one of the most famous, respected journalists, and all of a sudden he's covering DDP Yoga? Yeah, you know, and I heard that Frank actually stepped up and said he wanted to actually do this uh, 
you know, do this interview for uh, Real Sports, which, you know, was really, really strong to me. When Maggie, the producer, told me, she was like, no, don't tell anybody because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because Frank wants to keep this quiet until it gets out there. But he was so awesome. You know, and when we got done with, you know, he came and he watched the workouts. And, you know, when you do any yoga, you're expecting to see yoga. But you don't. You see some yoga positions, but you don't see yoga. <laughs> and it, it captivated him, the whole dynamic resistance and the breathing thing and how I've recreated something that once people actually see or are a part of it, you know, then, you know, it literally changes their views. I've never had one person finish the workout and go, wow, that's exactly what I thought it was. They always go, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> so... Frank was really cool about that. And then what was even cooler is that, you know, we sat down, we talked for about two and a half hours. Wow. And at the end of the interview, he said to me, Alex, I want to tell you, this has been one of my favorite interviews. And I started laughing. And I said, yeah, sure, Frank, but you said it to everybody. And he looked at me dead serious and he goes, no, Dallas, I don't. <laughs> and then I said, well, who have you ever interviewed anyway? And I said, what the shit? He told me some stories about Mike Tyson. Uh, because Tyson was his, uh, he, he actually stood him up two different times. Uh, and the second time he was telling me he was on a plane leaving New York, and Tyson was supposed to be on it with him. Because oh. they were going to Vegas to do this interview. And Frank looked around, looking around first class, he goes, he's not on the plane. He's going to stand me up again. And he got off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Now, one of the reasons they were profiling DDP Yoga was because of the accountability crib. The last time we talked to you was July 2012 at the Philly Comic Con. A lot has changed. DDP Yoga's gotten bigger, but your house has also gotten more crowded. You had Jake the Snake Roberts and Scott Hall living with you. And you were able to get those guys clean. You were able to get those guys sober. Jake had a couple bumps on the road, but you've been sticking with them. What's this whole year been like with the accountability crib and helping two of your closest buddies in the business? Well, you know, when uh, Jake came in, it was just, you know, me, him, Jake, and the rest of my buddies who would come through there and work out with us. Uh, Jake, you know, he made some really amazing turns and, uh, you know, dropped 60 pounds and really started to get his show, his shit together. And then we got that, call, you know, that, that direct, you know, tweet, that direct mail message from uh, on Twitter from, uh, from Xbox, you know, uh, from Sean uh, Waltman. And uh, he said, bro, please give Scott a call. He said he's got a gun. He's going to kill himself. I think he's for real this time. So, I mean, I called Scotty 15 times over, you know, the last 10, 12 years. He's never answered his phone. He's never called back. And it's, you know, it wasn't anything, you know, between me and him, because we were bros for 20-some years. But, you know, just the, the alcohol, the pills, you know. And bottom line is he picked up that night. And, and that, that phone call, you know, is out there for the world to see with Scott Hall's blessing on it and uh, has over a quarter billion views at this point. But um, he really turned, you know, he turned a really strong corner, eating real food, I have, I have the guys watch these movies. One's called Food Inc., and the other is called um, Genetic Roulette. And what I'm trying to explain through these movies is the food that we're eating today you know, may taste good, but it's really fucked up what they've done to the food. So you want to eat real food because real food will heal you, especially when you're a broken, you know, broken down athlete and you need whatever you can to heal your body. You know, DDP yoga can work so far because it's minimal joint impact on your body. And by the way, Scott Hall is the one who came up with minimal joint impact. I've been saying no impact or zero impact forever, but now that we're taking it to a much broader scale, my attorney says you can't say zero impact, you can't say no impact, because there's the slightest bit of impact in there. So... You've got to be able to say something else. And it was driving me crazy what to say until Scott Hall was listening to us in a meeting in my war room. And as I came out of the meeting, about two hours later, Scotty pulled me aside. He hadn't been at the house a week. 
he said, Dally, uh, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to separate my toes or anything or step out of line. He goes, you know, but uh, I'm here. You, you, you have your meeting in there. You couldn't help it over here, especially when you got to the no impact part. Are you, you know, you're confused where you're going to go with that. You had not time to answer for two years. <laughs> I had not time to answer. He goes, how about minimal joint impact? Because that's really what it is. And I was like, wow, that's perfect. You know, so that became part of the tagline of what EDP yoga is kick ass cardio. It will dramatically increase your flexibility and strengthen your core like never before, all with minimal joint impact. So Scott is the one who put that together. And he's like, oh, he's always been like the word man. You know, he sits back and doesn't say anything, doesn't say anything, and he makes you laugh at something or he busts your balls. Or whatever he's going to do. Either way, it's something that you're going to you're going to pay attention to. And uh, that right there, for everything that I helped him out with, and him getting sober, and so I talked to him today. He was talking to our, you know, one of my boys, Chris Carey, who handles all of our, you know, he's the head of our editing department, and, you know, puts together a lot of the videos that you see. Um, and you know, we all do it together, but he's the one guy who pieces that together. And and Scott, I walked in the back. I'm thinking, God, Scott sounds really amazing on that speaker back there because it's our editing room I walk back and oh it was Scott live <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so he's holding up pretty well then I'm sorry yeah he's doing, he's doing amazing and you know, one of the things that also really helped him was we brought Cody Hall up to live with us for a couple of months too and that really sealed I think really resealed and rekindled the relationship between father and son you know, again, I didn't do anything. All I did was put my buddy in a, a positive environment and help him get out of pain with helping him, you know, do the uh, hip surgery that he did. And the fans really came through big time on that, you know, and helped him out. And then, you know, the workout. And I, you know, did private, you know, private uh, courses, you know, so he can catch up to get to the, the bigger class. But I'll give him private lessons, you know, from time to time. And, yeah, I've, I've literally figured out how to help people heal their bodies, you know, and they got to do the work now. I can't do the work. That's that's pretty amazing. And I saw Jake actually over the weekend at Pro Wrestling Syndicate in Rahway, New Jersey. Dude's looking slim. Dude's looking good, you know. Jake, Jake is, you know, he's taking care of himself up till now, and I'm just hoping, you know, with Jake, it's always like, Jake's done great this week. Let's hope for another. Let's just stay strong and keep moving forward. Hopefully he can do that. Definitely wish him the best. Now, some people may not know, a majority of the WWE roster is currently doing DDP yoga. One guy that I get a kick out of every time you tell me he does DDP yoga is Ryback. <laughs> yeah. So Ryback, he actually, uh, we set him up on uh, online. It's sort of a tester for what we're going to do with our app. Eventually we're going to put together an app, not even eventually, within six months. You know, sometime in the first two months of the, of the new year, we're going to have developed an app that's going to be, there's going to be nothing like it. It's going to have so many features that will pop out over that next year that will blow people's minds. But we're already practicing the streaming, you know, getting the workouts to Ryback on the road. That's pretty cool, man. I mean, you'll get Ryback, though. I mean, when you see him all jacked and he's a big guy, I think on his single it even says big guy, and on the other side it says big traps. You don't look at that guy and think flexibility. <laughs> Did he approach it's you to do DDP yoga? Was it the other way around? What happened there? What happened there is he actually went to this site and bought it. And my my guy, Robert, who handles that division you know, of the website, he called me up and he said, hey, Dean, Ryback just bought the program, and I know you don't want any of the guys to pay for it. And he said, what do you want me to do? I said, you know, promo it, send it to him, and send me his phone number. I'll call him. And then we call, I called him, and we talked, and he told me about that injury that he had that was really, it was a devastating injury that he had to his leg. And they had to go in and reoperate three times. It was probably because it was infected. You know, that's what happens a lot with knee operations, you know, and hip operations. They get infected. Oh, man, that's bad news. And he was on his back for like 16 months. He had lost all his core strength and all of his flexibility. And when you're big, beat up, 
and bad. When you lose your flexibility, you are so prone to injury. And his core strength is a whole other level. I can't even imagine the weight that he's moving in the gym right now. I mean, just to look at him, he's pretty, it looks like he's eating weights. You know? But a lot of that has to do with his core strength is like at a whole different level than most guys that are in the gym. That's very cool. Now, obviously, you guys kind of have a good friendship now. You've worked with him as a client. But as a wrestler, do you see the passion that he has for the wrestling business? I mean, some people might look at him at first and say, oh, this is just a big dude. He's jacked. Vince likes jack guys. He found a way to make some quick money. Does he have a real passion for the wrestling business? Well, I, would, I can tell what, if someone's got a passion for it. I, what, how they treat the veterans and who they grew up watching. You know, and Ryback is a huge fan. Just like, you know, I started as a huge fan. And I think that's what makes someone really a great wrestler down the line. Because you've got to have, um, you got to be a fan to start off. And the ones that aren't, some of them still get over, you know? <laughs> but the ones that do just have that one little slight bit up, I think. That one more leg up the ladder. And, uh, you know, he, he's a guy who loves. Loves wrestling and uh, you know wanted to be one since he was a kid. So that's cool. And another guy that's doing DDP yoga, always tweeting about it. Titus O'Neil. You and I were just talking about D Dustin Rhodes versus Randy Orton. Another guy that's been kind of having some good matches lately with Darren Young. Titus O'Neil. That guy's much improved. Not getting much of a push right now, but that dude's an athletic stud. He is a dude. He's a all, he's a Hall of Famer. And, you know, and, uh, for the Gators. I mean. He's a, he's a, he's a, he was a, he was a stud of studs for him turn here. He was one of the studs of studs coming out. And then he played seven years in the uh, in the arena football league. And uh, you know he he's coming into this game you know not a kid and pretty beat up. So I think he's doing amazing. Do you see something in him in him that's kind of like yourself, considering you got into pro wrestling as far as being an in ring performer at age thirty five? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and. Uh, you know, I think that uh, you know he's got a he, he's got a hell of a, a you know a run if he gets the opportunity. He's got he's got to keep working hard. You know, he's got to keep paying the dues. He's got to stay healthy. You know, one of the reasons why he reached out to me about DDP Yoga because he knew he needed to stay healthy and limber so he can hit that mat and pop back up. You know, again, he's not a kid. You know, who's the most surprising client of DDP Yoga? I mean, I. For me, it's Ryback, but is there somebody else that's a celebrity? Could be an athlete, could be an actor, somebody random like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. I mean, you know, somebody totally out of the blue from left field that's doing DDP yoga right now that you couldn't believe when you checked your orders. Um, well, actually, the one one of the guys who I sent it to him because he really wanted to do it was um, Ralphie May, the comedian. Yeah. And Ralphie is down 80 pounds, uh, and um, my boy Gabe Iglesias, He's down 90 pounds, you know. So, again, I never developed DDP yoga for weight loss. It just turned out to be a really awesome side effect because of dynamic resistance. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, whenever I can help anybody, you know, start to own their life, that's pretty amazing. You and I are both from Jersey. There's another guy from Jersey right now, our New Jersey governor, Chris Christie. He's lost a lot of weight. He's made some great progress. I know he had the surgery, but... Have you actually been able to reach out to him to maybe do some DDP yoga? I've tried, but I can't get through to him. It's, his network's too tight. I've sent a couple of messages. I haven't sent the program once, but hey, you know, I would love to see Christy get. You know, he's gonna if he wants to be president at some point, and he's you know he's great. He knows what he needs to do, and you know, he's the kind of guy who's pretty much done what he's wanted to do his whole life <laughs> yeah. and made it happen. So. If you ever need to help, I'm here to go. And we know Triple H likes lifting his weights. He's working with Joe DeFranco and all that. But have you tried to get him to do DDP yoga? I don't try to get anyone to do it. They come to me, you know, from the weight parents to, you know, weight, weight two or three dollars show. I'd really like to, you know, give this a shot to help my back. And like, absolutely, man. And, you know, uh, turn around and uh, there, there's so many of the guys who came up to me. Like uh, Damien Sandow, he said, you know, I really want to do this because it'll be great preventative maintenance to me, which 
was brilliant to me because that's the smartest. That's the smartest thing you can say to me. You want to do this so you don't get hurt. All you have to do is look at a guy like Rob Van Dam, who does his own version and one of the most flexible, strongest guys on the planet when it comes to strength and flexibility. So let's just look at Rob Van Dam's career. 24 years of hanging and banging at a level very, 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 very few have ever seen with the kind of, you know, crazy bumps that he's done. Like crazy bumps. They were up there and signed for that three month or six months running in WWE. They're working his ass off, and that boy is dropping down one five star match after another, and he is hanging and banging and still going. He's 42. He's been hurt one time. One time in 24 years. Yeah, it's amazing. And he's and he's been ahead of the curve as far as stretching goes from the beginning. He always talked about it. He's like, I think he did an interview years ago. He was saying, I was the only one in the locker room that was ever stretching. <laughs> Absolutely. And, but he just doesn't stretch. Where That's the secret. He stretches and strengthens. And that's what TDP Yoga is all about. And I knew I had to get something like this and put this together for the athlete who wanted to have another tool in his toolbox you know, to become that champion. Because in wrestling, it's all about staying healthy. You can have the greatest push in the world. If you get hurt, that push goes bye-bye. And we saw in that HBO Real Sports feature, they talked about the previous generation of wrestlers that unfortunately died way too soon or is currently in dire straits. Do you think with the majority of guys on the roster right now doing DDP yoga, assuming, let's hope so, that they stick with it, for years to come, do you think just this generation is going to end up a hell of a lot better than the previous one? I think they could end up in the long run, but again, it's like you just said, if you keep doing it, yeah. and it's part of those things that you have to keep doing, and that's what I was explaining to you about my new DDP Yoga app that we're going to be coming out with in the new year, you're never going to have, you're never going to be able to do all the workouts and get sick of them, because there's going to be so many, it's going to be mind-boggling. I'm going to actually have them, like, quadrant off. Like, this will be for breaking up scar tissue in your knees. This will be for breaking up scar tissue in your hips. This will be for strengthening your shoulders. And, and there's still a workout that's 40 minutes. But, you know, strengthen your shoulders for that day. So if you missed a day going to the gym and then hit your shoulders, guess what? I got something for you. Now you want to go over here and work chest? I'm going to have something for you over there. It's still going to be a kick-ass cardiovascular workout, but you're going to walk out of that, off that mat, or off that, you know, uh, if you're on the road and you're in your hotel room, you're going to walk off, you're going to take a shower, pump to the mat. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm, I'm just going to take this workout, keep changing and changing and changing so it gets better and better and better. And it's constantly going to be able to go from one workout to another workout to another so that you're constantly growing and this is a workout you could do for the rest of your life, unlike every other workout on the planet. That's awesome, man. And one guy you worked with uh, with DDP Yoga last year, I believe, was Bellator champion Michael Chandler. What are your thoughts on his progress? I don't know if you've been following him lately in Bellator. He's about to fight Eddie Alvarez on November 2nd, the first Bellator pay-per-view. But the dude's looked sharp ever since he's been in the cage. Dude, I've not only been following him, I'll be out there for the fight. I talked to him last night, and um, he's going to get me backstage, you know, back for the deal, celebrity, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm actually going to call Austin and see if he wants to go with me uh, because, uh, you know, it would be great. To, he, he would love that fight. And, you know, that fight, to me, like, I'm, I know Tito's my buddy. I don't know Rampage, but I know he was a wrestling fan back when he was a kid. So I know we both know each other. But I, I think those guys could have a hell of a fight. Um but the real fight is going to be Alvarez Chandler. Oh, my God. That's, that's going to be amazing. Be the, that's going to be the fight that's going to be, you know. We, you saw what that was. If you haven't seen the Alvarez-Michael Chandler fight, I, I saw it on YouTube a long time ago. Go and watch that. It's five rounds, and, man, they beat the fuck out of each other. And for Chandler to be an All-American you know, wrestler, I mean, he was a stud wrestler. So he's got his grappling game. He's got his jiu-jitsu game. He's always working on it. I mean, he tapped, he tapped Eddie out. <laughs> you know, who saw that coming, you know? And his striking and his 
it is, it's, it's second to none. And his kickboxing, he's always working on his – like, I've gone down and worked out with Chandler numerous times. And he, he, he's got a huge heart, this kid. Huge heart. And the guys at Bellator, they see it, too, that he's also charismatic. You know, he's got over his right chest or his left chest. It says, blessed. And that's like his clothing line. B-L-E-S-S-E-D. He knows he's blessed. He gives so much back to kids. He's like a John Cena type when it comes to giving back to people. And uh, I really, I, I'm really hoping this kid can just keep on that role that he's on. He's undefeated right now. Uh, and I'm a big fan and friend. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this upcoming pay per view, November 2nd, right? Likewise. Uh, yeah, November 2nd, Long Beach, California. It's going to be a hell of a show. I actually had the pleasure of meeting him a couple times. Met him actually this year. For first time in person, I was talking to him, and I was like, yeah, man, you know my boy Dallas? He goes, man, I just talked to him the other day, man. He gets me so motivated. So he's saying he's yeah. pretty much the same things you're saying about him he said about you. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a class act. You know, we've spent some quality time together. And then a whole group of guys down there. I mean, what about the, <laughs> the fight his, 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 uh, his teammate had against Jones? Oh, my God. Oh, Gustafson? Yeah, from Alliance MMA. That was a crazy – you saw that fight? Oh my God! What a fight! Yeah. And that kid! Oh my God! What guts he had! And you know, he was—he he might have been around the way from beating Jones. And I know Jones did not take him. I don't think he took him seriously, you know, because Jones is, you know, without question, you know, maybe the top fighter in the world right now. And uh, that kid, Gunt, how do you say his name? Gustafson. Gu- Gustafson. 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 G U S T A F S S O N. What's his first name? Alexander. Alex, right? Alexander, yeah. Al- Alex. Yeah, that kid, oh, what a <laughs> tough son of a bitch he is. I mean, he's the kind of kid, you got to shoot him to put him down. I, I was he's shocked by his takedown lot. defense, too, man. I mean, that guy, you know what I mean? He's coming wow. from Europe. They don't got takedown defense there. And he's he developed that probably working with Mike and Phil Davis. Absolutely. I mean, Phil's a, Phil is an amazing wrestler as well. You know, but having him and Chandler to learn. And, and the kid's like a sponge, too, you know, because you can see in the ring, he was adapting to Jones, you know, the whole way through that. Whenever Jones came at him, and then he started coming at Jones, I mean, it was it was an awesome fight. And what I was really surprised was, and maybe it's because Alex is so tall, too, that he couldn't, he only threw like one or two of those those striking elbows that he throws. Yeah. You know, like when he does that freaking gimmick where he's got his hands up and hits you with that flipper, that elbow, whoa. That alone will knock you the next week. Yeah, it's great. Great fight. Hopefully they'll do a rematch, man. I'm definitely hoping for that. But you know, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what Dana White wants to do. Yeah, would it remind me? Remind me of Rocky Apollo Apollo <laughs> Creed one. They both end up in the, in, the, in the hospital at the same time because both of those some bitches had to go to the hospital after that freaking match. <laughs> and, and Tito Ortiz, you mentioned he's your old buddy. He was. One of the guys, one of the celebrities, one of the athletes doing DDP yoga back when it was called YRG. Are you worried at all for him as a friend, considering the fact he's got a lot of injuries going into that Rampage fight? Well, if he was to actually do the program, I wouldn't be. And that's the God's honest truth. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be. But, you know, when I, Tito, when I did it with Tito back in the day, I said, I'm, I said, how do you want me to bring this work out to you? I can bring this to you where I can teach you and help you go through it. Or it could be a kick to the ass workout. They said, bring it. I said, you sure, bring it. You know, because I'm 15, well, oh God, 20 years older than you. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want me to bring it? It was like, yeah. And I, you know, I wore him out. <laughs> <laughs> I wore him out. And it was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I should have made it so a little bit easier for him so that he could realize how much stronger he could get with it. Uh, so I made it too hard for him. <laughs> when he put it over, it was a hell of a workout. And that's what DDP yoga is. It could be the easiest. Yo, know, easiest workout you've ever done in your life, or it could be the most challenging thing you've ever done. And that's where I took it to Tito. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think Tito, you know, he's a performer, man. And I think that, uh, I think him and Rampage could go out there and have a hell of a match. Because they're both around the same part of their careers. You know, Rampage might disagree with me on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, you know, they're both, uh, towards the end of their careers, they both had amazing, both of them had amazing careers. And I think, it, I think it could be a hell of a fight because they, they've both got a couple of fights left in them that could be really strong. So hopefully they'll have a great match. Yeah, they're, they're, and they're going to have a tough task, though, as we mentioned, following Chandler Alvarez, too. That's 
got to be a, a fight of the year candidate. Is there anybody in WWE right now? I have an idea who you're going to say already. But is there anybody right now that catches your eye that's a young cat that you could see being like their Michael Chandler, a rising star that if you just give him a shot, give him the spotlight, they can get over, they can get into the main events? I'm guessing you're going to say Cody Rhodes since you essentially grew up with him. Or he grew, or you grew, grew up being his mentor. Well, you know, I haven't been watching enough to really know, and um, you know, I really, uh, I, I really don't, I can't put that on any one individual right now. Um, as far as uh, the guy that I'm the most proud of and, and happiest for his success, without without you know, without question, is Brian Daniels. You know, I love the yes, yes, yes. I mean, I, I love the. Uh, like I said, it, I got quoted in one of the, a bunch of the, you know the online publications as saying that uh, um, Daniels was very Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit ish, and uh, really, I mean, his game was already so stepped up at the height of his game, but he even elevated it even more from what I've seen him from time to time, and uh, you know, he, he's a he's a hell of an athlete, and uh, he's doing a great job out there. Absolutely, absolutely no. Dallas, thanks so much for your time. I know you got to get going, but before we go, man, let us know where people can find DDP Yoga online. And also, what do you got coming up? You've been everywhere. Every time I turn on the Today Show, HBO, Good Morning America, I see DDP Yoga. You're everywhere these days. Well, I can't tell you the next place I'll be, but it'll, be, it'll definitely be a splash. It's a major network deal, uh, and I've got a bunch of stuff in the fire right now, uh, if anything, DDP Yoga is only growing leaps and bounds, and uh, you know, everybody's talking about it. You know, and once they realize that it ain't your mama's yoga, then it's like it's like money in the bank as far as the guy, whoever or woman who's into it, are loving it. And don't listen to a word I have to say here as far as to my own horn for my own you know, workout, which is changing lives. Go to DDP Yoga One Word on Facebook. DDP Yoga One Word. Just read what people write. It's sort of like you can't make up, you know, a person chant yes. Because they're chanting that yes for one person, Brian Daniels. You can't make them chant Stone Cold. You can't make them chant EDP. You know, they've got to feel that. They've got to be inspired by that performance of that individual. It's the same thing on DDP Yoga uh, Facebook. You can't make people write what they're writing, you know, and what they're saying about the program and how it's helped heal their body. I had one woman write a few weeks back, uh, I have, uh, I've had fibromyalgia for the last 15 years of my life and been in pain every single day. She said, this morning, I woke up with no pain. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, you can take person out of a pain for just one day. It could mean a lot. So That's amazing. go to ddpyoga.com. That's ddpyoga.com if you want to see some of the amazing testimonies. And you haven't seen the disabled veteran that I helped walk again, well, he's right there. As soon as you pop it on, that'll be the first video you see. But don't just stop there. Go read some of the testimonies of the people on the transformation section, the success stories. Read what these people have to say. There's some. There's a lot of videos up there, too. And uh, you know, everything that we're doing here is a real deal. You want to be a part of it? I don't. You want to change your life? You want to own your life? DDPYoga.com. Freddie boy, Jersey boy, local boy. Uh, good talking to you. And your your stick, as far as interviewing, is light years from when you started. I'm proud of you. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you were actually my first on camera interview ever, and in how far we've come. Yep. You know, and you, you just keep getting better and better. Eventually, I'm going to see you on Sports Center. <laughs> Hopefully, man. We'll see what happens. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate the time. As usual, it's been your pleasure. <laughs> Bang.